Keen Winters. I'm with the Center Right Coalition. Uh, this is our last uh, presentation of the year, and it is the fourth presentation in a recent series we've done on really suggestions for the Wausau economy. And uh, we started back in June with David Ward, who came, and he really spoke to us about uh, really the strategic positioning. So in, in the next 20 years, the global middle class is going to go from 1.8 billion people to 4.9 billion people between now and 2030. And the question is, is what do they want? And the answers are food, feed, fuel, fiber, fresh water, and leisure time. So uh, what are those kinds of things do we have that we could attract with direct foreign investment? <coughs> we were followed then by uh, Secretary Jaden, Paul Jaden King, and he talked about the strength of manufacturing still in Wisconsin, as well as gave some ideas from his time as mayor of Green Bay about really working to get the area working together. Uh, the third speaker in that um, selection was Ben Bransel. Uh, ben really came in and, and talked about the strength of Wisconsin agriculture and our nearness to that. And he laid out some pretty specific prescriptions for us. Uh, so to look at the advantages that we have in the Watts area of being a transportation hub, having plentiful water, having the capability to process wastewater, and that we can look for food processing. And then his suggestion was as you get one or two food processors, go immediately to them and ask them, what do you need in your business for boxes or anything that goes into the inputs and then try and find a business that provides that to come to that area. This is the final piece uh, and it's on tourism. Now I'm a Wassa native and so when when I grew up in Wassa I think well tourism is something you do up north and I think that's an attitude that a lot of people have run, but things have been changing. Things have been changing uh, due to the, the good work of a number of people here in Wassa and Wassa really has a future in the active sports tourism. And so people who hunt and fish like me and my father and my grandfather are kind of going away. <laughs> and, uh, and people who mountain bike and kayak and, and uh, ski and, uh, are, are going to be the future. And uh, so to help us sort of get our heads straight on uh, Wassa being a tourism destination, we've invited Stephanie and David to come up. Stephanie probably needs the least introduction after 18 years, was it, on Discover Wisconsin, writing yeah. an Emmy Award winning travel log show, uh, and, and probably knows more about Wisconsin than anybody else because you visited it piece by piece by piece. Uh, David used to be with uh, Visit Milwaukee, and he, his claim to fame, of course, is being responsible for the bronze fonds. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't know. It's Henry Winkler's 67th birthday. Maybe. It is. Yes. So there you are. And, and, but he's also an adjunct professor at Marquette University of Film. And you've done some work to bring films like Public Enemy, which was filmed in, in some areas around here, uh, to Wisconsin. So I'll let them take it away and, and uh, tell us about tourism. Well, it's, it's awesome to be here. Um, for almost 20 years, I hosted Discover Wisconsin, and um, I hosted uh, almost 350 television shows and wrote 4,000 radio programs on everything weird and wacky and fun and adventurous and historical on Wisconsin. But the 300th television show I ever did was on Wausau. So when we did that, we presented the Wausau Convention and Visitors Bureau a $5,000 check which Darren Schaefer spent at the bar. <laughs> Wait, that's right, we're on uh, local access. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, uh, to, to use for, for advertising. But um, my background is that um, 20 years of television, you, you learn a little bit about communities. Um, I logged over 1 million miles. And before the Discover Wisconsin career, I was Miss Wisconsin, which I logged 100,000 miles. And so you see communities that are doing things. Many of them are doing things very similar to each other, and some are uh, taking some very big risks. And some understand the power of tourism and the power of branding. So that's what we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about. But I have not only uh, Deputy Dave, who I'd like to, to uh, him to come up here to tell you a little bit about his background, but also we have Lola Ray. Lola Ray is the chairwoman of the Governor's Council on Tourism. So at the Department of Tourism, we exist by statute to market. 
Um, we are accountable to the governor directly, directly, but we also have 15 members on the Governor's Council on Tourism, and these are experts in the field. So just to give you an example, some of the members are uh, James Bolin. He's in charge of the Cable Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. He just brought in the International Paralympic event to the United States to Wisconsin for the first time in 15 years. We have Stacy Watson. She's a Vice President of Marketing for Harley-Davidson. And we have Lola Ray, who's in charge of the Osthoff Resort and last week won Innkeeper of the Year for the state of Wisconsin. So we have some really incredible people giving us guidance on where to go. But as we start, before you make any branding plan, you have to have your research in order. So we live by research. And the research that we get comes from the United States Travel Association. They're based in Washington, DC. And literally, for us in the tourism industry, they're the gold standard. So here's a couple things where tourism is going that might surprise you. First of all, is anyone my generation, maybe older, we actually had one week vacations, like growing up. I had one week and two week vacations with my mom and dad. Sometimes in the North Woods, sometimes overseas, sometimes in Florida. 43% of vacations right now are weekend getaways. 46% of people don't get to take a vacation. <coughs> this isn't even an economic <coughs> issue, it's a time poverty issue. So the 43% of people that take vacations are a weekend getaway. The 46% that don't are afraid that they're going to be replaced at work or that they're going to come back to work and they're going to be so far behind, they're not going to be able to catch up. So let's look at the 43% that are vacationing. Um, before, they would book their, uh, their vacation a year in advance. You know, they want it all planned out. Now on average, the average American plans their vacation six days in advance. And the reason they do that is they want to know, one, if they're flying somewhere and they're on that plane, they want to know that the person sitting on their left or right spent more money than them on that flight. They're waiting for the very end to get the absolute best deal that they can. And part of that happened because of the recession. In 2009, people stopped taking vacations. Uh, tourism in Wisconsin plummeted by about a billion dollars. And so people started doing comparative shopping. And that comparative shopping, even now that we're coming out of that recession, won't stop, especially in tourism. So that's the number one thing, six days in advance. Number two, because they only get a two or three day getaway, when they check in, they want a quick check in. They don't want to wait in, long, uh, in line a long time because they only have a couple days. They want to know that where they're staying, they got a great rate, that they're going to be treated well, and that it has all the amenities of homes because homes aren't selling, so people are upgrading their homes. So people want a down comforter, they want the nice shampoos, they want the nice lotions, and this kind of lets you know how people are looking and how we have changed over the years. People are so stressed out that for many years, golf was a huge destination, and it's still big, golfing is huge, but three years ago, spa services passed up golf two to one because people are stressed out and they don't have the four hours or eight hours for a couple rounds of golf. They want to get in, they want to get in, by gosh, and they're going to relax and they're going to go home and they're going to go back to work. So it's really an interesting phenomenon on some of the things that are happening. Now here's another thing. At the Department of Tourism this past year, we launched a customer service program. And if it's not just me, let me know if you feel the same way. In many places throughout America, customer service stinks. It's not good. Basic, I don't want to even say values, basic courtesies aren't adhered to. Um, we have a generation coming up, great kids, but they're so connected to their iPods and iPads and Blackberries that they're disconnected. So we came up with a customer service program, and I was worried that it was too basic because a lot of it is saying, good evening, how are you? It's so nice to have you in Wausau. Where'd you come in from? Was it a pleasant trip? What are you interested in here, business or pleasure? Now, a lot of folks, they don't know to do that. They also don't know that when a customer comes to you with a complaint, they're not looking at you saying, you're a bad person. They're just looking at you saying, my sink doesn't work. But it's really interesting with the way millennials and Gen Xers think. It becomes a personal attack. So we have a program that teaches them to say, it ain't personal. This is them 
They've worked really hard for their money and they're here on vacation. They don't expect perfection, they just want things to be right. So um, that's another way that things are changing. Now, one of the things with customer service is we know um, through history that if you get superior customer service, you'll go back to that place. If you have bad customer service, what will you do? You'll never go back, and not only will you never go back, you will preach for the rest of your life about that terrible experience you had at that place until the day you die. But here's what's interesting. Um, a lot of uh, focus in marketing and branding for tourism, they really look at the younger generation. Oh, these millennials, they're coming up. They got some disposable income. Let's get them. Well, here's the challenge with millennials. They're very adventurous. So if they come to Wausau, they have a great meal, they stay at a great place, they ski at Granite Peak, and they love it. They're never coming back. They're not loyal. And they want one thing, adventure. And number two, a new experience. So every time, they want to have a great experience. So we have this customer service program, and we have businesses giving superior customer service. Well, OK, here you are. That's a new trend coming at us. But here's the good news is that the mature market has disposable income and they have time. And the thing they value more than anything else is customer service and loyalty. So you give a mature audience, a mature person, a great experience, they're coming back. And here's the next thing. Not only are they coming back, one out of four vacations is taken with grandparents and grandchildren. And a lot of times they also bring the, the parents as well. So that's a market that you really want to go to. So those are just a few of the trends that are coming, coming at us. Um, tourism is big business. A lot of times, um, I know you had Ben Bransell here and you had the WEDC um, secretary, um, Paul Jaden. But a lot of times people say, oh, tourism, it's so nice. You know, good for you, a lot of fun. Tourism is an economic powerhouse. We're a $16 billion industry. And in the last year, very few people had the kind of significant improvement we did. Our travel expenditures were up $1.2 billion. We have 181,000 people working full-time, full-time equivalent jobs due to tourism. And the great thing is, we can't be exported. We're not going to China. The Mississippi is right here. Wausau Lake is right here. The Wisconsin River is right here. It's going nowhere. And so that's an advantage for us. Also, there's something called the travel effect, and, and this is a, isn't light, but you know, Americans, we, six years ago, we passed up Japan as the hardest working industrialized nation in the world, working 50 hours a week, and that was six years ago, before the recession, when employers could demand even more. So we have a really, really hard work ethic. And so when we do play, we wanna play. We wanna have some fun. So um, when we look at the travel expenditures in Marathon County from 2010 to 2011, you were up 7% to $194 million of travel expenditures. That's huge. You had 3,966 people working full time because of tourism here in Marathon County. And again, it can't be sent to any other county, to any other state. It's unique to this area. And when, when legislators especially say, well, tourism, what's, what's, it, you know, what's the powerhouse of tourism? $25 million in local and state taxes last year, you gave back because of the travel expenditures here. <laughs> so just know this, your legislators need to listen to you because you have a voice. Um, one of the things that the Department of Tourism, when uh, Deputy Dave and I started, is we were behind, and I, I need to tell you the story because as we go forward with branding, branding and marketing, I hate to say it, it takes money. It does. So the last couple years, I bet all of you in this room have seen the Pure Michigan ads. Everyone seen Pure Michigan? Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Well, here's why. They have a $33 million budget. Illinois tourism, $44 million budget. When Deputy Dave and I started our marketing budget for the Department of Tourism, was $9.9 .9 million. We were getting so outspent, and here's the thing. Wisconsin's been the number one destination for all eight Midwestern states for years. 
But with Michigan and a great campaign and Illinois with a great campaign, they are starting to tear into our territory. And here's a problem. If someone sees a pure Michigan ad and says, gosh, I love it, I have to go. And they go and they have a great time, we may never have the luxury of winning them back here. So the first thing um, I had to do before we even got to the branding is increase our marketing budget. And there's a reason that even in the recession, Coca-Cola and Chevy spent $1 billion marketing. Trust me, they're smart. If marketing didn't work, they wouldn't do it. They cut everything. They cut employees, they cut budgets, they didn't touch marketing. So the first thing I had to do is go in front of the Joint Committee on Finance and testify why we needed more money. So I have a, a private sector background. This is all new to me. I went in front of uh, you know the 16 senators and representatives, and it's half Democrats, half representatives. There were four of us testifying that day. And the first up was Secretary Mike Hipsch. If you know him, he was a representative for years. He runs the Department of Administration. They have a billion dollar budget and 900 employees. So he goes up, he testifies, they ask a couple questions and off he goes. So second up was uh, Secretary Rick Chandler. He's in charge of the Department of Revenue. They have combined insurance, combined reporting, some controversial stuff. He goes up, they ask him some questions, off he goes. The third person up was the Secretary of the, or not Secretary, but the Wisconsin Supreme Court um, Chair, what do you call it? The Supreme uh, Chief Justice. Chief Justice, thank you. Shirley Abrahamson. So she is the third up, I'm fourth up. So she goes up now, she's spunky. So she went up there and they kind of had a little talk. Well, she gets done like five, 10 minutes later. So I thought, well, this won't be so bad. We're tourism, we're like Switzerland. Everybody likes us, we don't care if you're left or right. Everybody's welcome to the table. So I go up to testify about our great return on investment, and this is true. As you brand your area and you market your area, make sure you know the return on investment. We know that our return on investment is $6 to every $1 that you give us. And, and that is a solid, good marketing um, uh, platform to look at, about six to one. So I'm talking about what we give back to state and local revenue. Um, in 2010, over $1 billion was given back in, in taxes because of tourism, and that money is used for schools, it's used for police, fire, and streets. So, you know, so they start asking the questions, and they ask more questions and more questions. Well, who do you think there was over there for over an hour? Tourism. So they're asking about, you know, well, why we're, we're cutting schools a million, you know, $900 million, why would we give you more money? Well, I explained what I just talked to you about. One of the um, senators wanted to know, well, um, how are you reopening these welcome centers? Governor Walker said he wanted to open them up. Well, we opened up eight of the welcome centers that were closed. We just reopened number eight. And we did it with a new public-private partnership model using convention and visitors bureaus and chambers, the Department of Transportation, and the Department of Tourism. We have this whole new model where we've reopened them. Well, if you know Senator Lena Taylor, everyone, anyone? okay, Senator Lena Taylor from Milwaukee and Senator Alberta Darling, she was the co-chair of Joint Finance. Uh, Senator Taylor asked me this question about how we're reopening them. So I explained to her how it's working. And she asked me the same question five times in a row. So each time I answered it the same way, it was the same question. So finally, Senator Darling, the co-chair said, you know, Senator Taylor, she's answered your question five times in a row. Well, two words happened, can't fight. It was awesome. These two went at it and they started hashing things out. The issue had nothing to do with tourism and it had some things to do with them. To make a long story short, Senator um, Darling takes the gavel and she said, order, we'll have order. The gavel broke. <laughs> so who knew that tourism would break the gavel, the Joint Committee on Finance, but we did. But we got that stepped up increase of two and a half million dollars for last year and two and a half million dollars for this year. So that brings us to 12 and a half million. It's a huge step forward, but it's not the 33 million our friends in Michigan have or 44 in Illinois. So how do we catch them? And this is gonna be important as you brand your city and you want people to see what you've done. Earned media, which is just a fancy way of saying free press. So what we did is we wined and dined 100 of the best travel writers in the United States. From the Washington Post to the Huffington Post to the New York Times. 
we showed them the greatest things about Wisconsin. And Darren Schaefer worked with us on what we call the Geiger Tour. And the Geiger Tour brings in these travel writers with a niche. So maybe they have um, a passion for kayaking, well, they're going to come here for the kayaking event. You know, maybe they have a passion for downhill skiing, they're coming here for that. Our earned media this past year was $63 million, up 173% from the prior year. So now you take that 63 million with a stepped up increase of 12 and a half million, and we are in the game. So this is a little bit about the direction of where we're going at the Department of Tourism, including how we market, because marketing and branding go hand in hand. And what's been interesting is we've been overly branded for 15 years. You've seen the slogan, life so good, live like you mean it, escape to Wisconsin, you're among friends, stay a little bit longer. Five slogans in 15 years. Who are we? You know, I Love New York has always been, I love New York. Great faces, great places, South Dakota, Virginia's for lovers. So we did something radical with our marketing. And at this point, I'd like to bring up my deputy, Dave, who's gonna tell you what we did. Thanks, Steph. So Stephanie mentioned the schizophrenic five slogans in 15 years and what we did. She also mentioned research. We take it very seriously. We spent over $300,000 a year on research to know what we're doing to help us guide us in our marketing programs. So based on sound research, we said, what are the motivators for people to travel? Leisure travel, spending your hard-earned discretionary income on travel. Number three reason, to visit friends and family. Number two reason, rest and relaxation, which is very much the pure Michigan kind of thing, rest and relaxation. Should also say something about pure Michigan, the lessons learned, and something we really weren't doing too good of a job at prior. The reason pure Michigan has caught on so effectively is because they launched it big full time in 2008, even though they were working on it before that. So they stuck with it and they have funded it properly to the point now it has permeated our consciousness. So that consistency is important. So that's number two, rest and relaxation. But the number one motivator for people to spend hard earned money is very simple it's fun. And you say, gosh, that is deceptively simple. But if you look at research, travelers from our target markets, and let me just say something about our target markets. About 53% of that 16 billion is people traveling from point A in Wisconsin to point B in Wisconsin. So we love to have Wisconsinites visit, travel, and use their leisure dollars in the state of Wisconsin, and they do that. The number two market is the Chicago area. We love, we may not like their football teams, but we love to see the license plates come across our border. They're coming across in bigger numbers than ever. The other battleground that we go after is the Minneapolis-St. Paul market. We go after them aggressively. And, when I, and then now we're actually doing television in Iowa and a little less in Michigan. We do all the traditional media. We do our TV, we do radio, we do print, we do billboard, but we do a lot of creative out of home things as well. We're on the CTAs, the L trains in Chicago. We're on the light rail in Minneapolis. We get our messaging across that way. We're also, I would like to say, on the cutting edge, trite term, but it's true, of things like the social media, your Facebook, your Twitter, and all of those things. So, back to fun. Why does fun work? The fun works because fun means different things to everyone in this room when it comes to vacations. Fun for one person might be downhill skiing. It might be going to an art museum. It could be fishing on a lake. It could be fine dining. All of it means different things. So fun enables us to tell a myriad of stories. Now I'm going to shortly bring up Lola, and we have the we're pleased that Lola's here, and the reason Lola's with us is Stephanie, Lola, and I um, this afternoon met with the opinions page editor of the Wausau newspaper to talk about the very subject of the power of tourism. And there's one factoid that I'd love to, I, it's just sort of my favorite factoid about the power of tourism and if we're doing our job effectively. Each household in Wisconsin would need to be taxed an additional $565 per year to replace the tourism taxes received by state and local government. So it's a huge difference in all of our individual pocketbooks. So I can't, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about how we're interpreting um, the, the whole brand of fun other than say a couple things. One is we don't do this in a vacuum at the Department of Tourism. 
we employ some of the brightest minds in marketing in the hospitality industry and out. And Stephanie mentioned Stacy Watson from Harley Davidson. She chairs our marketing committee. Lola's on our marketing committee. We have the marketing director at the Marshfield Clinic who spent years in consumer marketing at General Mills in Pillsbury. We have others in our industry. So they, working with our ad agency, which is Laughlin Constable based in Milwaukee, help shape our <coughs> messages. Now, we've been doing a lot of things around the theme of fun. And we've also been engaging some what I would say celebrities and personalities to help spread these messages. And the reason is, and as Stephanie alluded to, our success in earned media and PR. If we were launching sort of nice, fun commercials, the media might sort of cover it a little bit, maybe not. But when we bring in Wisconsin native Tony Shalhoub from Monk, multiple Emmy winner, to make a cameo in a TV commercial, when we bring in the Fonz Henry Winkler to do a commercial, all of a sudden, our regional TV commercials become a national news story. So that's why we've employed these celebrities. And let me tell you, they do it at a fraction, they do it for almost nothing because they love the state of Wisconsin and want to help us. We just shot a, a fall 2013 commercial with Packers wide receiver Jordy Nelson, and he was terrific to work with. More importantly, the people behind the camera, the creative people, in addition to Laughlin Constable, you guys may be familiar with the names David and Jerry Zucker. David and Jerry Zucker, with their friend Jim Abrams, grew up in the Milwaukee area, and they went to UW-Madison, they went to Hollywood, they made a little film that was a huge success called Airplane. Then they went and did the Naked Gun movies. Then they did Ruthless People. David's done the last several installments of Scary Movie. Jerry, his brother, just did Ghost that made $500 million. They have not worked in the state of Wisconsin in over 40 years. Until what? We asked them. And we said, who better to interpret the brand of fun than these directors who've literally had billions of dollars of box office with these classic comedies? So we had the original spot with David that he did with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra, our winter spot, which will be airing again this winter. We had David in with his airplane co-star, Robert Hayes. They shot a spot on one of our Northwoods lakes that will be airing next summer. We'll be debuting our whole summer program at the Governor's Conference on Tourism in Madison in March, all of our summer program. And we just brought in Jerry, David's brother, a couple of weeks ago to shoot a Fall 13 campaign with um, Jordy Nelson. So we got a lot of fun, exciting things in the queue that I think are gonna be ridiculously memorable. The last thing I'm gonna say is I sort of drilled down to how this impacts the Wausau area, a couple things. Um, we, our job at the Department of Tourism is what we'd like to say is to set the table. Now we have $12.5 million to market. Hopefully, you know, not going well, maybe we'll be blessed with some more in the next two year budget. But the reality is our job is to use that money wisely to get that six to one or better return. So our job is to market it. And we've been, you know, so far very successful at doing it. But I mentioned the bronze fonds as an example too. Because the bronze fonds, when I embarked on that program in Milwaukee, I got a lot of hate mail. And people are going, why would you get a lot of hate mail about a statue of a guy who's upbeat and doing the affirmation of the thumbs up sign? Well, people in Milwaukee said, no, we need to run away from the beer, brats, and happy days image and be something that we're not. And as, some guy, as someone who spent seven years marketing Milwaukee, I said that Milwaukee has gone from New City to Brew City, from Brew City to New City, excuse me, Brew City to New City. What that means is you embrace your strengths. And the state of Wisconsin has a ton of these things, whether it's frozen custard or fish fries or all of these things that we have, our brewing heritage. We should be embracing them. And when I said we've gone from Brew City, it's you come and enjoy these classic traditions and then you are exposed to surprises that different destinations offer. So that's sort of the advice I have. Try to be true to your brand, try to be true to who you are, and don't try to be something that you're not. And um, I, was, I lost my train of thought on that one other point about marketing. Our job is to set the table. We spent $12.5 million as hopefully the giant sucking magnet to get people to come to Wisconsin and spend money. So we bring them into the state, 
as you say, set the table, and then we hand it off. Who do we hand it off to? We hand it off to Darren to try to get people into the Wausau community. We hand it off to Sarah to do it in Stevens Point. We hand it off to the lodging facilities that have marketing budgets, the attractions, the arts and cultural venues, all of them have marketing budgets. It's their job. Now what we've been doing is to be very conscious of being very proactive in communication with all of our partners in the industry. I mentioned March, Governor's Conference, we will be unveiling our total, our whole summer campaign so that the entire industry will see it months in advance so they can work on their own marketing programs that are compatible under that fun umbrella. And so far it has been working. Now with that I want to bring up Lola because Lola maybe can give a little bit more insight in sort of how we undertake our marketing as part of the marketing committee, and also maybe give you some examples from her vast experience at both the American Club in Kohler and now at the Ostoff. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna grab the baton because yeah. that's literally what happens in our marketing efforts. And I'm gonna wear different hats, but just talk to you about how how our marketing efforts really flow. So as Dave said, and Stephanie, we have the state marketing efforts, and that's really the umbrella under which we, we can all talk. And if we're smart, we'll look at that research, and we'll look at how that's working, and tuck along under that umbrella. And that state marketing effort of fun is huge, because it is universal. It's universal because fun is something everybody can relate to, and everybody can appreciate. So the very first hat I'm wearing is the, is the hat as the chair of the Governor's Council on Tourism. And here we, we really integrate this whole fun branding mechanism into the, uh, we, we provide the litmus test, not only on the council but also on the marketing committee, to the fun branding that the state is undertaking. We, we perform in an advisory role. That is our role. We're advisory to the, to the Department of Tourism in the marketing efforts and so when, along with the Laughlin Constables, so when a, an idea or a campaign is rolled out um, in, the, in the conception stage, we react to it and we give it the litmus test to see if, if that's really what, what happens where the rubber meets the road. And so when we're doing that, we, we say, well, we're, we're not sure that this works, but we certainly think this will work. And, and marketing and branding is fine-tuning, fine-tuning, fine-tuning. It is giving it your best shot with all of the research that you have as an arsenal, giving it your best shot going forward and then measure, 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 refine, measure. And so uh, in terms of the Department of Tourism, we are in such a great place right now because we have the strongest arsenal we have, in my opinion, we have ever had because we have huge huge measuring uh, resources, huge marketing resources, and we have, I think, the Department of Tourism that really understands the brand and is rolling it out wholeheartedly. So, <clears throat> we've got this umbrella of fun marketing. Next, it is handed off to the, to the regional, the CVBs, the tourism commissions, anybody who, who is in that middle section of branding for the state. And they take the baton next and run with it. And as I said, if, if you're smart, you'll look at all of that research because it's available to all of us and integrate with it so that the, the flow is even and, and the same. And, and it, it, it all makes sense and the brand is very complete and unified. So we take that information and I'll give you this, this example in the Elkhart Lake Tourism. We actually use that fun brand. We don't talk about it, but neither does neither does the department in terms of their, their umbrella marketing. It, we look at it and, and we, we say, how can we really integrate in this? We have had, you, you, perhaps you have seen our ads and perhaps you have, now I'm talking to, uh, for the Tourism Commission of Elkhart Lake, because it's my belief that all of this has to be integrated in order for you to have the strongest brand presence. So at, at Elkhart Lake, <clears throat> our visual measure, measure or a visual image of what that looks like is the photo that we have of dangling legs off of a pier. You may have seen it. And, and we use that image to really convey our brand of fun. And our brand of fun is comfortable, relaxed, 
Um, this is the approach that we take to every leisure guest, every group guest. First it was leisure, we rolled it out as leisure because it looks like a, a leisure activity, it's legs off of a pier, you know, what could be more fun? But we also apply that to the group guests because when our group guests come in, and by that I mean corporate <coughs> groups or uh, associations, any of our group guests, we also apply that, that really fun attitude. We brand, we brand our destination as a place to have fun for both group and leisure. So when we push that out to the groups, they say, well, maybe this is going to be a little bit different. Maybe this is, is it, it's not going to be um, so stodgy and so controlled and our, maybe we can really create something here when, when we are visiting this destination. <clears throat> so then we take it down to the business level and that's the Ostoff. Again, we plug into that experience and try and provide our guests, all of them, group and leisure, with a, with a very comfortable, relaxed, fun experience because that's what they're looking for. A couple points to both Dave and Stephanie's comments earlier. We are experiencing the same thing, that, uh, that the vacations are shorter, that they are booked much shorter in advance, and I'm sure that you all feel that too. One of the things we noticed, especially in 2009, 2009 was the shortest booking window. And in 2009, we actually had people booking on a Friday morning for coming in Friday night, a lot of it. We still have some of that because people are waiting, waiting, waiting till the last possible minute to make their travel decisions um, for the best deal and also because their, their life has become so um, convoluted and busy that sometimes that's the only way they can do it. But they do expect um, close to perfection because they are time deprived and they want to make every minute of this very, very important time that they have to share with their friends and family, they want that to be extremely um, uh, worth it. Value is important to them. Value is so important to them. Um, so that's the type of experience we want to um, provide them. But I guess my, my end point would be that the more that we can integrate with the umbrella, the fun umbrella that the state has really built for us, um, and, and provide that very smooth flow of branding throughout. And we all have a different take on it. Well, uh, it depends on the strengths of, of your community and really the strength of your product. What, what are your strengths? It, it goes back to doing your uh, marketing plan and, and your um, SWOT analysis and all those old things year after year and fine tuning, fine tuning, fine tuning. <clears throat> Pure Michigan did not get there the first year. They spent six years refining till they got to Pure Michigan. And, and they used some of the same techniques that are being used right now. They measured it every year and then they refined. They measured, they refined. And they took that information to their legislator and their governor and said, here it is, we can return for you once they had it refined. And, and it is no different for our efforts. We are doing that on every level in the state. And so I, I guess as, as one of the end users who I think benefits from this, I would um, welcome uh, anyone here, uh, really anyone in the state, to, to benefit from the good work that's being done on the very top level and take advantage of this research and all of this information which we have available to us. That's my name. Keeper of the Year voted last week. Yay! <laughs> what was the award you just won at the Ostoff Resort? Um, the Condé Nast uh, Travel Readers Poll number one resort in the Midwest. So, we are lucky. Um, I know. <laughs> we didn't even know the, 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 the contest was going on, so when we oh. were contacted, <laughs> I had I had our folks contact them and say, "Is this real?" <laughs> you can well, do too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lola, are you sure you didn't know? <laughs> no, you didn't, honestly. Um, one thing is you brand too, it really is what, what Lola said, is what makes Marathon County, Marathon County? What makes Wausau, Wausau? I've said it for years to Darren, nobody does winter better than Wausau. Two places in my 20 years of discovering Wisconsin that do winter premier, Eagle River and Wausau. You know, Nine Mile Recreational Trail, is one of only a few in the entire state of Wisconsin that has lighted nighttime skiing. Sylvan Tubing Hill, 
What's great about tubing is it keeps increasing in popularity because any age can do it. Granite Peak Ski Hill area, you know, there's no bigger in the Midwest. And, and uh, all of your outdoor ice rinks, what is it, 14 throughout the city? Nobody does it better. So in your branding efforts, that's gotta be a part of it. But another thing is the arts. I mean, even in the winter, you're doing snow sculptures with the arts and ice sculptures. Um, the Lee Yawkey Woodson Art Museum and, and Birds in Flight, that's been one of the, the top attractions in Wisconsin year after year after year. The arts festivals, it brings them here. Um, the, the theater in the downtown district, Arts Block, is incredible. So as you brand, that's got to be, you know, right, front, and center. But one thing I do want to run by you as you go forward, and that is international, uh, the international market. For the first time this last year with our $16 billion of travel expenditures, we were able, due to our new firm, Longwoods International, do revenue on our international market. $600 million came in due to international visitors. Now, we all know the huge emerging market is China. By the year 2015, China is going to have 272 million visitors vacationing somewhere outside of their country. So you can bet that the United States is going after 272 million visitors. Um, and here's the beautiful part, is that on average, they spend twice as much in a week as our European visitors. Hmm. They spend $7,500 a week, where in Europe it's about $3,500. Um, I was just in Chicago at the International Global Forum Outlook, and a lady who, they love designer labels, they love American products, but they love designer labels. Um, the lady who owns the Louis Vuitton store there, where I look in the window and drool over a $7,000 purse that even if I had the money as a Wisconsinite, I couldn't ever allow myself to buy. Um, they will literally have, it's, it's called the super elite, people with so much money, and it's, it's also used to, towards those in Mexico, the super elite, there's about 30 million of them in Mexico. And China, of course, has this research, the surges of billionaires now and multimillionaires. But the lady literally had to close her shop because seven, Chinese visitors bought everything in their store. Now these are handbags that start at $600 to $26,000. I said, how many handbags did you have? Did you have? She said about 400. Wow. It's crazy. But here's the thing. In China, you can ask any visitor. Okay, in America, where are the Chinatowns? They only want to go to a destination that has a Chinatown. Wisconsin doesn't have one. They'll tell you about Chicago, they'll tell you about Philadelphia, they'll tell you about Miami, they'll tell you about New York City. We don't have one. In China, when they check into a hotel, they expect all the amenities. They don't want to pack a toothbrush, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste. They don't want to pack slippers or pajamas or rope. They want it there. They have to have hot water everywhere. Much like we bring bottled water wherever we go, they drink hot tea wherever they go. They're up for trying American food, and they're adventurous. In fact, this is the one thing that was going for us. They want an experience. They want to come to a destination, have an experience, but every day they need one Chinese meal. And they prefer it to be breakfast, and they prefer it to be extremely healthy, because they know then it doesn't matter what they eat the rest of the day, they've had that one healthy meal a day. Well, Wisconsin, we're definitely behind the times in that. And that's something that we need your help with. We need help all around, around the state. Because again, by statute, we market. We can try to get people here. But once they're here, we have to make sure, you know, you have to deliver on your promises. The other thing is Brazil. Minus the Chinese, Brazil spends the most money. And uh, talking with the lady who runs the Harley Davidson Museum, they get several thousand people from Brazil vacationing here every day. And they have a book, you know. So, they can track their visitors because they sign in, they make them do it first thing when you come into that museum. And Brazil, they are big city people. They like big city life, bright lights, big city. And they love Harley Davidson. So that's something that's going for us. But um, as we go back to China, could you imagine the Chinese coming here and hitting Wausau in the North Woods with all the room to roam? They would freak out because they're so overpopulated. Um, what we saw with the Olympics and the smog, that's not just, you know, a one-of-a-kind thing. That's every day. That's how they live. 
If they could come to the North Woods and take away that experience, I believe they'd be back over and over. Now as we brand, we hope we've branded well, with fun. But it's really important locally that you know what we're doing, and what we're doing, what the United States Travel Association is doing, it's called Brand USA. And it was really interesting because Barack Obama a few years ago, do you remember this? Tourism took a huge hit because he went up and said, you know, what are these people doing having their meetings in Las Vegas and spending all this money? You know, we gotta stop doing that. We've gotta be more frugal. And then people listened and tourism was hit so hard. Vegas is finally recovering from that. But he learned about the power of tourism through the economic recession and really depression that we had. So now he created um, a brand USA. Because all these years, the United States has never marketed itself to a global audience. Because we're kind of we're kind of the bomb. We've never really needed to do it. Well now, we have these countries like the United Kingdom, and Germany, and Spain, and Greece, and China, and Japan, saying, we're going after that money. Because there's billions of people on this planet, and we want a vacation in our place. So uh, President Obama created Brand USA. So here's what I recently learned from Brand USA. They needed, again, to start with research. So what they did is they said, how's the world looking at the United States? This one floored me. They look at us as middle-aged, like driving your dad's Cadillac. They've been there, and they've done that. Because they look at the United States as the only places that the cities have marketed, well, or states have marketed. So for the rest of the world, the United States is Disney, it's California, Florida, and New York. So if you've done that, you've done America. And isn't it interesting? Because in a sense, there is some truth to that, because that who, for the last 20 years, has marketed internationally. So they're feeding right into that. The other thing is they look at Americans as brash and arrogant. And a lot of it has to do with politics and every time a politician says, America is the greatest country in the world. And it was really interesting with the tens of thousands of people that they researched that these are people just like us living in a country they're proud to call home, but every time they turn on a TV and a soundbite, they capture that soundbite that says, America is the best country in the world. Well, I do feel that way. <laughs> I do. But in terms of tourism, when you're talking about a global market, every other country feels that way too. So as we start to brand, it's about being true to your identity and appealing to people and delivering on your promise. If you tell them they're coming to Marathon County and they're going to have some rest and relaxation, they're going to have some adventure, and you're going to have some great food, and you're going to meet some crazy people, you better have all those four things. And I know you've got those four things, especially number four. Um, but so it, it's, it's really interesting because tourism is becoming complicated as lives become more complicated. So that's a little bit about what we have to say. I know our, our yeah. time is up. We've been here one hour. But if you have any questions uh, for us, yeah. we're, we're, we're all available. Questions, so, comments, yeah. anything? I was just in, in Phoenix at a national conference. And when people came to talk to me, mostly government, senior government managers, they talked about Wisconsin and the world off their tongue was political discord. Yes. Is your research a cup on that? Well, it's interesting because um, we were really worried with everything that happened, you know, with Governor mm -hmm. Walker mm -hmm. and the, the, the Act 10, Act 10 yeah. what would happen. And at first, it wasn't so good. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I don't know what the switch was. But it became different and almost reputable that people, uh, I think Wisconsin for a lot of people wasn't on their radar. And with all of this stuff happening politically, all of a sudden became on the radar. Mm -hmm. And then people did what we, we normally do. You know, you go to who you, what side you're on, mm -hmm. and, and you fight that. <clears throat> but then when you let that go, you start discovering other things. And so what we learned is when the, the protests started happening, we were getting the emails. You know, people emailing in, I'll never vacation in your state again. Right. And then a few months later, we started getting emails saying, keep up the great work. I, even people have said, I don't really agree with you, but you guys are setting a path, whatever it was. And there was this huge shift. 
So, but it's interesting you say that because even my dentist said to me, he was in, in, in Florida, he had Wisconsin on his name tag and everyone wanted to stop him and talk about politics. Yeah. And so I'll say this, it put us on the map yeah. and there's a slogan in the PR world, you know, any press is good press. It's, and, and I'm telling you, our numbers this last year up $1.2 billion. And in 2012, right now, and Darren, Darren gave us his numbers for Wausau. Oh my gosh, the year that you have had, we are hearing from, we heard from Oshkosh, Door County, Vilas County, Lake Geneva, um, Marathon County. It's the best tourism year they've ever had. So, but you are right, that is out there and we're now associated with politics. In fact, people said to me, what's going on? You know, you got Paul Ryan, you got Governor Walker, Ryan's Preakness is here in charge of this, but um, whether you're you know, pro-Republican, against it, it doesn't matter, we're on the map. Well, and in addition to all that, um, you know, we've had the Packers coming off of a Super Bowl win. Right. We had the Badgers in the Rose Bowl. You had that rare occurrence where the, um, the uh, Brewers were in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so those things. And so for better or for worse, the name ID of Wisconsin is through the roof. It all, is. All over the country. Wait, and I do have to say this. So Dave mentioned the commercial that we did with uh, Jordy Nelson. Okay. He's a champ. Uh, the day we filmed, it was supposed to be a, a beautiful fall day and the fall colors were awesome. It was pouring rain in Green Bay, freezing. And so people are having umbrellas, but the cinematographer was able to make it look beautiful and hide it so it didn't look like it was raining. We had Jordy for eight hours. He ended up working 11. And his agent was there, and if you know anything about sports agents, they want him in, they want him out. He was a champ. Um, he also, because you could see his breath, it was so cold, had to suck on ice cubes all day long to counter the, the wind. But um, I'm kind of a, a personality gal. I don't really care about bodies or looks, but I'm telling you women, God bless America. Jordy Nelson is a beautiful man. <laughs> he was so ripped in his uniform. I was like, oh, I love you. So, um, but his, what was that? We couldn't afford oh, Donald. Yeah, we couldn't afford Donald Driver. Yeah, after Dancing with the Stars, his rate is crazy. And yeah. you know, the interesting thing, that was that Tuesday, when the weather was horrible, he worked his tail off. That weekend was that spectacular game he had against yeah. Houston. Yeah. And so, maybe he's got to do more commercials for us. Well, and, and if you ever see the TV show Inside the Huddle, so Inside the Huddle said, what did you do, you know, that you were just so on fire? Well, they knew. So they showed these clips of him from the TV commercial he filmed with us. And said, you know, and Glenda the Good Witch is in it, and he's buried in leaves. And he said, you could blackmail me with these pictures. Um, but they said, you've got to do that every week for the Department of Tourism. So again, that was that increased earned media where they talk about you, which was really good. Any other questions? Oh, we should also have, you know, we have four regional tourism specialists yeah. around the state. And when Stephanie mentions assessments and customer service training, that person on the ground for you is Sarah Pischer. And we all work for you, the taxpayers. Sarah is there, and we used to say at Visit Milwaukee we had 600 members. You get out of it like a health club, what you put into it. So if you don't ask us, use us, leverage us, and Sarah and her resources, you're not going to maximize your marketing abilities. Well, and Dave and I um, both come in, obviously, Lola, but with just private sector backgrounds only. So government, government's been a new experience for us. But this is one of the things I love about Governor Walker is he put together this cabinet. And a lot of times for the last 40 years, I've been told, uh, the cabinets rarely meet, maybe once a year, once every couple of years. Well, how do we know what the DNR is doing or DOT? Because, I'm sorry, aquatic invasive species, that's a tourism issue. If our lakes are filled with these you know, bad fish, um, that affects tourism. Uh, same with transportation. If it's gonna be blocked off for the next four months during summer and peak season, that affects us. So for the first year, we met as a cabinet with the governor every week. And now for this last year, it's every other week. But we have to submit a weekly agency report to him uh, with all of our accomplishments, what we're doing for jobs, what we're doing to market Wisconsin. And then once a month, we get 30 minutes with him one-on-one. -on -one. And when you're sitting this close to the governor reporting in, you want to make sure you are reporting in everything. So at the Department of Tourism, the first thing we did is have a strategic plan. He signed off on it. We finished it in about a year. And then we finished our second one within another six and a half months. 
So we're on our, we just revamped our four-year strategic plan. And all of it's public, all of it's on our industry website, it's all here, um, so you can really track what we're doing. And Stephanie mentions the age, all the agencies submit every week um, these plan or these reports, and the governor then puts them in a binder. Oh, wait, I shouldn't mention binder. <laughs> <laughs> we get that. But I'm both. Did you just do that for that? Yeah. <laughs> the guy on the camera's laughing. So, do, in the research, do they research who makes the vacation decisions they in do. the family? They do. Who is that? 80% are women. Not me. Okay. I kind of figured when you were going through your top list that the S word, meaning shop, would be in there. Yeah. But it wasn't. So that was a little. Retail is a big component. Retail is there. Okay. It's in the top 10. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And this was an interesting one, too, as we look at indicators, and this is where Wausau, Marathon County, I think, thrives. Restaurants. Mm -hmm. I was just with the National Restaurant Association uh, 20, 30 years ago for dining out and eat, dining out and eating. It was like 20% of our budget. You know, you have to pay your mortgage, you have to pay this, pay this, but dining out, it's now 48%. And that again has to do with the time poverty issue. And people are just saying, I don't have the time to cook, I'm going to pick something up. And certain yeah. parts of the state certainly lend themselves better to retail. You know, sure. the places that have boutiques and this kind of, you know, those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. You talk about the five slogans. What did you guys do to bury this? Are you burying them? Are you trying to resurrect them? No. Or leave them alone? We're just leaving them alone. We're, we're leaving them alone and, and doing the commercials based on the number one travel motivator. And like I said, it's been really cool because we won the three national awards and it's kind of innovative because everybody has their slogan. And we're saying, we're good enough, we don't need a slogan. We're and gonna you know, let the state speak for itself. And we're not saying that a slogan doesn't work for a municipality, a community, a county. Yeah. I mean, it might. I mean, I grew up in the Twin Cities and Minneapolis at one point tried to brand itself as the Minneapolis. Yeah. And to me, that was sort of pretentious nonsense, you know, you know, trying to sort of tag on to, to the New York City. And, you know, that was relatively short-lived. So you can spend $50,000 on a consultant. You can launch a logo or a slogan. And what's going to happen? Everyone is going to be criticizing it on the comment section of all the newspaper articles. Well, and that's what was funny. He was telling me about the Minneapolis and, and how they hated it. I'm from, you know, Beloit, Wisconsin. I loved it. So when I went to Minneapolis, my dad said the Minneapolis, are you right? Yeah. He said the Minneapolis. I was like, oh, right. It's like, Mike, I have never been to New York City. I loved it. He hated it. And that's one of the reasons we stayed away from the branding. Because people, or the, or the slogan, I should say, not the branding. Um, because people go nuts over it. You know, they either hate it or they love it. There's usually never an in-between. It it it's the focal point for which people go to to criticize. And by not doing that, you take that off the table. And then they have to look at the overall branding and messaging. And again, it's been overwhelmingly positively accepted. When we've had major stories launching these commercials in all the major media around the state, opinion pieces, everything. You know how they have those comment sections where people can be anonymous and yeah. snarky? Yeah. You can count in one hand the negativity we've had in the news media over the last That's, two years. It's been awesome. The other thing that, that is confusing is many people have, have confused the slogan with the brand. And we don't have that because we, we aren't really uh, confusing our brand with any type of slogan. Yeah. And that's why no slogans and Jordy Nelson in a Packer jersey. How can you say no? <laughs> yes? Uh, where does sports tourism come in? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, the question, if you didn't hear it, was where does sports tourism come in? It's huge. So much so that we created a sports marketing grant called Ready, Set, Go. Given community, in fact, Darren Schaefer has been the recipient of one or two of those. Um, what we learned during the recession is everything plummeted down. Sports marketing not only maintained the same, it went up. It's virtually recession proof because if you're an Ironman person, you're doing Ironman. If you're going to be in that canoe competition or kayak competition, you're doing it. So sports marketing is really important to us so much so that we have a gem grant program on it. As well as the committee and the council. Yeah. We do. All of the niche markets for which most of there are grants now. Um, have a, a, a niche committee on the council. So meetings and conventions are one of, it's one of the committees. Uh, sports marketing is one. Of course, the GEM grant, which uh, is huge in, in terms of making all of our marketing dollars stretch a little farther, apply for a, a, a GEM grant and have that approved. That's a, a really good way to have uh, our marketing budgets um, gain some traction and get more likes.
That's a good question. And we didn't even touch on the joint effort marketing grants, which are called GEM grants. Um, by statute, every year, we have to give um, $1.12 million of grants to be used for joint effort marketing. So what it means is, say you have this great idea for an event, but we know as people own businesses to, to really get an event off and launch it, it usually takes three years. So you have up to three years to be eligible for this grant. The top dollar amount is $39,955. And so you get that grant. Um, we, it's a very extensive. It's kind of like if you get a GEM grant, you just have a work canal. It's very tedious because it's our tax dollars, and we need to make sure we're getting everything that you say we're getting. We have a committee that verifies that information, and then at the end of the year, you have to come in with all your, your budget and what you've spent, what you earned, so this past year, we gave out the $1.12 million and the return on investment for communities with the GEM grants was $33 million. Wow. So again, it's kind of how tourism comes back to the community. Anyway, thank you. Oh, yeah, one more. Just a comment, uh, Stephanie, my way of introduction. I'm Charlie Gray. My wife and I own the two callers here in town. I also, hey, do you know Bill Lock? I, I do. And Jim Magotti? Of course. I hate to interrupt. Culver's is a new sponsor on the gov with the Governor's Conference on Tourism. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and I uh, hate to interrupt, but I was there today. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, 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 hang up. Great show of hands. <laughs> Uh, but I serve on the board of directors of the, of the Restaurant Association. You know our CEO, uh, Ed Long. Oh, he's great. Yeah, and, he's a legend. Yeah, and Paul Cunningham, I believe. Yes, he's, he's, on, on, he's, on, he's on our council. I just want to thank you for your leadership because uh, I consider myself a guy that pays attention. And I cannot tell you who the director of tourism was under Jim Doyle. So thanks for your leadership. It sounds like we're going in the right direction. We've worked with Darren on a lot of things he's doing, and uh, it's great for everybody. What a nice thing to say. You know, and I should say, just to plug up, when I, we did the bronze funds in 08, we partnered with Culver's, right. and we did a whole program, and we raised $18,000 for a literacy program for the Boys and Girls Club um, through the sale of the autographs of these programs, and Culver's was very much instrumental in making that happen. Well, and, and thank you for saying that, because one of the things that we did right off the bat that was different, and I, I am lucky that I came to it being in tourism for 20 years. Sure. And a, a lot of times, I mean, I traveled to all 72 counties and I'd fallen in love literally with every county for a different reason. Even the counties that have virtually no population and not a whole lot of tourism opportunities, they still had something or they had somebody who was magical. And um, a lot of times when you, when you choose a secretary, it's a person, so I've been very blessed to have that. It's just a person from one small area or one big area, but they don't know the rest of the state. So for me, the first day on the job, people are like, well, you know what, we've always said that tourism ignores the Northwoods. I said, well, my headquarters has been Eagle River and St. Germain, so I think I'm pretty good for that. But I was born in Beloit, my dad's from uh, LaBelle, my mom's from uh, Elroy, my uh, year was Wisconsin, I was based in Oshkosh, we had a, a production headquarters in Madison, Milwaukee. So I felt very blessed to travel nonstop because some of the challenges you have in Marathon County or Portage County, are very different than the challenges going on in Sawyer County or Rock County. They're very different. In Southwest Wisconsin right now, they're going insane because they can't get cell phone coverage. They're less than an hour from Madison and they can't get cell phone coverage. So we had a great discussion about make it an asset. This is the one place you're yeah. disconnected. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. It's starting to work. Really? And so that's what we're doing. That's and so thank you. You just you made my night. Thanks sure. for saying and, that. And let me just piggyback on that because because I've seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, and the, I have I have actually told Governor Walker that uh, the choices that he made in both the secretary and the deputy secretary are hugely smart choices because we have a voice in this state now. Mm -hmm. And I just say we, as everybody here in, in the industry, you know, fighting for that customer and that dollar. We have a voice because both of you have really contributed to, to make uh, that voice for us. And we have visibility that we've not had before. And piggybacking on what you said, Hats off to you all. Thanks. Thank you very much. And uh, we're not just saying that because we want free Culver Sundays for everybody. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks.